Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Kelsey, and I have Ashley on tonight, which I'm super excited about. Um, Ashley, and I, I don't even really know how we met. Like, this just like team meetings and stuff. We were well, no, we first met on the cruise, remember? And we were oh, dancing yeah. with each other. And then... I don't, yeah, I don't know how we actually became like, oh, next to, um, at the one, at the boot camp Rachel had, I actually sat next to you and then we were talking, you're like, why don't you come over? I was like, okay, I'm going to go over. Yeah. So, um, we were basically kind of just like sidelines and, um, I was just like so intrigued by Ashley's story. And so I, go ahead and just share a little bit about your story and how you got started with the business and, um, what you're up to now. Okay. I'll try to keep it short. Um, basically, so I'm at Purdue University. I'm a senior now. It's crazy. I just turned 21. So let's see. My freshman year, I actually, it, Tiffany Her found me on Instagram. She was stalking my site. And I was like, who is this lady? Um, I saw the hair, skin, and nails. I jumped at it because I was like, oh my God, hair models. I just I cut my hair. That got me. And I was like, oh my God, yes. Um, so anyways, and so I reached out to her as a customer. I did the whole three months and I was that person that canceled after three months. I just turned it off and I was done. Health to me wasn't a priority my freshman year. I was out, I was partying and doing the whole nine yards and the sorority. Um, still followed her on Instagram. And then a year later, crazy how it worked out. I went to Indianapolis to go visit my best friend, Sam, who just had her hair done from Tiffany, her best friend. I know this at the time. And Sam comes home to me and she's like, Oh my God, my hairdresser's best friend makes like forty, fifty thousand dollars a month. She works from her phone, like all this stuff. And she's like so hyped because she's an accountant now. And she's like, we're so broke. Let's do this. And I'm like, okay, hold up. Who is this girl? And she goes, her name's Tiffany Her. And I was like, what? I was like, dude, I was a customer from her. And so we kind of sat back and forth. And I feel like I had every doubt in my head, probably like you guys had. I'm going to suck at it. I don't have $100. I had $114 and some change in my account. Um, and we looked at each other and we're like, let's get real here. We're going to go to Nordstrom or Target or Sephora or the bars and spend a hundred dollars. Why don't we just do this and make some money? We're on social media anyways. Went back to Purdue, thought about it, called Tiffany the next day, signed up that night. I actually almost quit the next day. I had buyer's remorse. I woke up the next day and I literally sat like this and I go, what the F did I just do? And I went to go call Tiffany literally and be like, I'm so sorry. Like, I can't do this. And then I woke up to all this notifications, dream warriors, welcome post. And I was like, oh my God, like I cannot quit. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know anything. I was not on social media that much. I literally had no idea. And I just, but I just started because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to figure it out. Um, Kelsey and I've had this talk before. I'm, I was very, I'm very self-efficient with that. I don't really like to ask questions unless I like absolutely need it. Tiffany was hands-on. But I went on YouTube, I looked at trainings, I stalked top leaders. I found out who Tiffany was tagging. I went to follow them, I followed them. Um, and then keep it short, basically, I went Ruby in a month. Um, but I didn't keep it, I didn't keep it. So I made my $1,000 bonus and that's great because I had 93 cents to my name for about three and a half weeks before I actually went Ruby. And so after that, I had my head up my butt, I stopped. I lost it. I got it back. I lost it. I got it back. And that was a struggle. Um, my priorities weren't straight. I was still going out. I wasn't really doing this. I wasn't staying plugged in. And so that's something that we can kind of talk about throughout just that back and forth. It's so mental. And then once I decided to like, which I'll go, I'll go into maybe that mindset of how it switched for me, what caused it, um, kind of woke up and was like, what the hell am I doing? I'm literally management marketing major at Purdue. Like, why am I not using this? Um, and so basically December <laughs> kind of like had a wake up call, started working the business like we should, like we lay out for us. Um, and I went diamond like two months later. And so like right now I'm going for double diamond, which I'm close to hitting. So it's crazy how I started from Ruby. I literally only wanted three to $500 a month. That's all I wanted. Nails, manicure, spring breaks. And now I'm doing this for a full time thing after I graduate. That is so awesome. I seriously love your story. I like get goosebumps every time. So the main thing that I really want to talk about, I mean, there's a bunch of things, but the first thing I want to touch on is just kind of like, what, what do you think your age kind of has to do with it? Because I think that sometimes like people get in their own heads when they sign younger people and they're like, Oh, I have to treat them different. Or, you know, I have to do this or I have to do that, or I have to baby them or whatever. Um, because I want to make sure they get, get the vision. What do you think is the most important thing that you do for people your age to help them kind of 
get started without caring about what other people think. Cause I think that's the biggest hesitation for most people um, that are younger. I mean, I, I had that fear up until I had kids. And then at that point I was kind of like, I don't really care because my kids aren't going to care. Um, so I need to figure out like how to relate to that. So can you kind of touch on what you do or how you kind of got over that and help other people get over that? So I'll start out with basically what I thought. And cause you know, I was in the sorority in the Greek life and you don't do that. You know, you just, that's something that people, you know, shit on. Sorry, excuse my language, but it's true. You know, you make fun of people like that. Um, I, so I like refused to post to Instagram. Don't know why I literally social media, like it's, Instagram is my stuff. I love it. Use Instagram, but I was so scared and it's crazy because I ended up dropping my story, uh, myself two years later and those people, they have nothing to you. So, you know, I was so, I was so worried about what they're going to think. And honest, honestly, I got made fun of at parties. I left a frat party one time in tears because people were calling me out. And obviously I gave my two cents there and stand my ground, but I left and I was in tears because I was so embarrassed. And so I stopped working. Um, but at the end of the day, my bank account was still low. I still had to say no. I still had to go home on weekends and work. You know, I still had to do those things and live paycheck to paycheck. And I'm like, I'm an idiot. And so for me, just a little background, what made me really switch is uh, I went to career fairs and career fairs and everything was just not clicking. Um, and so I finally had a wake up call. I was like, why am I not doing this for full time? So a big thing with our age is just, you got to like put us, put it in our perspective. You know, obviously I don't have kids, you know, I'm not married, but may, think about that, you know, or put it in a perspective. I think I had to talk with Kelsey, make them think about their student loans, you know, okay. Maybe, maybe all you want is $500 a month, but guess what? When you're working that great corporate job that you are working your ass off for, which you're probably going to hate, um, four hundred dollars a month. That's a that's a really good student loan payment, you know, or that's a car payment. Make them think like that. Make it in their perspective. You know, I can't. I really can't relate to a single mom working three jobs. You know, like I'm staying here with Brittany, who has two kids, and um, both are her husband's deployed, and so is my boyfriend. So it's like she's kind of a single mom, and I see it, and I'm like, holy crap, you know. But as a college student, I don't really care you know like the next student college student's not going to be like okay well, well i mean good for her you know but you got to put it in their perspective because like when i was going through it you know i didn't really i was like okay that like that's cool that you know tiffany can stay home with her kids that's cool that kelsey can stay home with her kids but like i'm in college like i haven't even started the corporate job um but i got a taste of it you know when i was working it so make it seem you know do you want extra time to go to concerts do you want extra time to go with your friends on weekends vacations Spring break. That's a big one. Think about that. You know, get your manicures. Do you want more going out clothes? Do you want more bar money? Like kind of view it like that because not everyone wants $10,000 a month. And that's something I really work with my girls. I send them the monthly average. I'm like, where do you see yourself right now? What will help you? Yeah. We, get, we get an idea and things change. Cause guess what? When Tiffany first helped me, I wanted Ruby. That's all I wanted. All I wanted. And then when I got a taste and I kind of woke up and obviously my why changed, like dramatically my why changed um for a really good reason i'm like i need to make this work like i have to do this full time and that can so don't write off the younger people just yeah. because they might have a lot to work for right now because every like, what six months people something happens in their life that's exactly what happened to me six months you know i met someone stationed in north carolina that i knew if i worked a corporate job i could be i could not be with him for two more years you know what I mean? So that's a huge reason of my why. So don't throw, don't just write them off because they might not be your next diamond. You don't know that. <laughs> Tiffany, even when I had my head up my butt, she was like, girl, let's go diamond. I'm like, I can't even keep Ruby. Like, what are you thinking? You know, but she never stopped. Um, and so that's a big thing. You just, you have to make us see it from a different perspective. But when my college girls come to me, I don't treat them any different, just like I would my moms. You keep it real. Keep it honest with them. You know, if here's the thing, too. If they're going out and they're posting all these going out photos and they're not working their business, I'll call them out. I'll be like, listen, I want to help you, but you're spending your time there. I stopped going out as much. I don't watch TV. You know, I don't do the average college stuff anymore because it doesn't bring you any money. It doesn't bring you any revenue. You're not growing at all. You're wasting money. The six hours I can spend at a bar, I could be putting it into my business. Yeah. Kind of and, I think, and I think too, like one of the big things I want to touch on is like, I think it's hard when you originally set that goal of three to $500, like the adjustment to redream, you know, like you're like, Oh, I hit that goal. I hit that achievement in my head. 
And then you have to kind of say, okay, well, like now I do want more. Um, but it's scary to say that because it's not always like guaranteed. And I think that a lot of people have that fear of like, you know, if I say that I want that $10,000 bonus and I don't, you know, get it, then what? you know, then that's going to be scary. And I don't want to feel like an idiot. Um, so that was huge. That's something yeah. that every time Tiffany would like post, like she's going diamond. I was like, Oh no. Like I was so embarrassed because like, I would be like, what if, what if, you know, yeah. and like, you gotta just cut that out. Like who cares? Be like, yeah, I want it. But no, Kelsey redreaming. That's something that's huge. Like you have to, you have to feel worthy of it. I know that's probably so like cliche or whatever, but it's true. Like I would sit there even when I was what, six, seven months in, I'd be like, okay, that's great for her. Cool. She got diamond. That's not me. I can't do that because we have it trained, especially my, like, I'm just relating for my age too. And like my kids in my class, like we go to, you know, we go to college, Purdue's a great thing. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Like, it's not what it cracks up to be. It's, it's weird to take a non-traditional route, but I, <laughs> that's something that I would be like, oh God, can you not post that? Cause I don't know if I'm going to hit it, you know, like, uh. <laughs> and, and I guess I, what, I, would still I, miss think, I think too, that like, one thing that you mentioned is like just acknowledging the fact that everybody gets, has people that are like haters. Those are always going to exist, whether you're making your own Etsy shop or, you know, you're whatever you're doing, like people are always going to be haters. And so you have, and, and, and it affects everybody. It affects celebrities, you guys, like it does affect people. It's just a matter of how much you let it affect you. And so it actually obviously let it affect her for some time until she just kind of pulled her head out of her butt, like she said, and was like, you know what, like this career fair stuff, this is for the birds. Like I need to do something different. And so once she had that moment and everybody has those moments or a combination of multiple moments. Um, and honestly, people have those moments before they even join the business. And a lot of times that's why they join the business. Because like, I know for me, it was before I joined it, I was kind of like, what the hell am I doing with my life? Like, is this really it? Like I went to school to do this for the rest of my life. And I think um, that, that mon like the monotony of that was like very scary to me. And so that's why I love this business and like being able to own my own time. But like you said, like, I want to just touch on like that you did go through that, that you always weren't this mentally strong person that was kind of like, Oh, okay, whatever. Because I think some people think that we just kind of woke up and had like we joined and we woke up and we we were just diamonds and we had this mentality of like whatever and so just touch on like what you did to kind of work through that like how you know you did like cry and you did let it affect you but like how you're a better person now and what that looked like and i want to touch real quick because and here's the thing guys even as a diamond making you know well above what i was making the, yesterday I was in tears because I was so stressed and I was literally contemplating, Oh my God, like, do I need to get a corporate job? Because I'm not moving how I want to do it. So it's normal to have doubts, but you have to push it out because we're looking at apartments for Ethan. And I, when he gets back and I started freaking out, you know, the bills, this, and I was like, Oh my God, like, what if I can't do this? And she looked at me and she goes, Ashley, you have seven months to go double diamond. If worse comes to worse, like you're fine, chill. And so even at a diamond rank, you can still have those doubts. It's me this mental, this business is mental. And what I had to do is literally stop because I, you know what I, you know what I did? I started looking at jobs in Fayetteville. I did. I started looking at jobs in Fayetteville. Once I did that, I'm just saying you can still work and do this, but I'm saying for me, once I did that, I was exercising like I was like entertaining another option. And once that happens, it works, takes the back burners for me. This is, that's, that's how I view it. So I had to think about, you know what? No, this is my only option. I have to make this work. Um, so for me, a big difference, what switched for me, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm very hard on myself. So I got over myself really quick. I cut the excuses. I really um, took complete leadership over my team. Um, I really gathered everyone up and was like, what do we need to do? So really kind of started from square one. A lot of it, as I found my why, you know, when I first started, it was nails. It was this. Now, obviously, you know, I wanted to bring my mom home from Victoria's Secret. I wanted to do this. You know, I want to move in with Ethan. And, you know, that's, that's something a corporate job is not going to get for me. And so every time I have these doubts in my head, right, I have to remember, you know what? Like, I have to make this work. This is my only option to be with the man that I love, you know what I mean, in North Carolina for two more years when he gets back from Afghanistan. Like, that is my goal. When I graduate, I'm doing this. And that's it. And along the way, like little stresses like that can get you down, but you have to just push it out. You have to remember why are you started this? What is your goal? And if you don't know, write it down. 
um, two months ago, I literally sat on my couch by myself and just wrote down what I want. I wrote down what I want, who I want to be, anything. I had front and back. And I was just like, okay, you got to regroup and um, don't stretch yourself out too thin. So a big thing that I did is redream, really. Just say that I'm worthy, set my goals, know, know my why, um, and really, really cut out the extras that didn't do me any good. Like when I say I don't watch TV, like I literally don't watch TV. Like maybe, okay, maybe like fix your upper like one time, but like that's, like that's really it. It's little things like that, guys, that make an adjustment. Recently, what I've been doing is get a routine. Routines really, really, really help me. Kelsey knows that I stay at her house and I was like, this is killing me, dude. I'm so, <laughs> it's probably going to kill me. But I was like, I'm so out of my routine, but I'll wake up, I'll listen to a podcast. Okay. Instead of listening to music, I'll play a podcast. Okay. I'll get up, make my bed, brush my teeth, go make my eggs, still listening to the podcast, an audio book. Then I'll take some time. Maybe I'll read my daily devotional or read some book or I'll do my homework. I go to the gym. I turn my, I turn my do not disturb on because that's my time. When I say you have to have your time in this business, guys, turn off your phone. You're probably like, oh my God, what? Like I have to work till 6 a.m. That burns me out. And then I say, screw it. I, I take like, I do power hours, love power hours. That's a huge thing that I changed, um, which we can maybe, oh, sorry if I'm jumping the gun here, but um, I set times for myself. I have an hour of homework. I have an hour of studying. Then I have an hour of charting or an hour of business. You know, do that. Um, planning to avoid those little excuses that we really can avoid. Um, so really that's what changed everything. Just being more aware, being aware if I'm busy or not, um, holding myself accountable. That's the biggest thing guys. Like when I had my head up my butt, Tiffany never messaged me. Ashley, you have your head up your butt. Like, what are you doing? No, cause it's my business. Like this is your business. If you're, no one's going to do it for you. No one's going to do it for you. I can give you all the resources you want. At the end of the day, if you're not going to make that post, you're not going to make that post. And I wasn't posting. I wasn't doing that. My mom was in my ear telling me, Ashley, you need to post. You know, what I told her, please leave me alone. <laughs> I was like, mom, I love you. Please leave me alone. Like, no, I don't want to do this. I'm done. Like, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, what the hell is dumb for you thinking that? But it's little things like that, you know, it's just holding yourself accountable and being like, you know what, I need, here's my goals. I think, I really think just setting your goals and your dreams is the biggest thing that I never did. And writing them down. Like that is such a huge key to that. Like, yeah, we all say we want these things or whatever. And like you say, you have your goals and your dreams in mind, like you want diamond, but like, it's literally like, what are you going to do to get there? And those, that's what those goals should be. Um, and like, I always say like one of my favorite tips I've ever gotten in this entire business is. Um, when it comes to working out when you can do this business, figure out when you can't do the business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like you're working full time, like those hours or whatever, you can't do it. Figure out when you won't do the business, like your eight hours of sleep or whatever you require. And then figure out when you will work the business and work it like, but figuring out that time makes it like so much more intentional. And that was like a huge thing for me when I was like, going through transition periods is what I call them. Um, cause I feel like when you have those moments of like, what the hell am I doing? It, it literally just makes your roots so much stronger in the business because you're reminding yourself even the, through those tough times and your roots get even deeper. So like, it's not like any, the, the wind is just going to blow you over. Right. Somebody says, no, like you're just going to be out. Um, I and, love I love you. I love getting. Yeah, and I think, and I think that too, like changing, changing mindsets on that too is is huge. Um, but okay, so let's let's kind of shift gears, and I want to ask you about kind of like how you do manage your time with like school, um, you know, taking classes, you know, going to the gym, you know, figuring out time when to do that, um, and and how much time you actually spend on the business, um, or spent on the business, you know, before. Obviously now, like as a leader, it's a little bit different because you have, you're answering questions and all that stuff. But, um, what, what do you do to manage your time? Like, what is like the, the best tip you can give people? I will like walk you through kind of like what I do. Cause it works for me. Um, it's really good. And before I start, um, yes, like kind of what you said, like, make sure you're actually working. You're not just busy. So like, I used to think scrolling through my Facebook was me working and that's not like, I don't scroll really anymore. I just, unless I'm like looking at potential. So let's just keep that in mind too. Um, so literally what I do now, so what I've done since I actually went diamond, I wake up, I like clean my room. 
I listen to the podcast, Kay. Um, and well, what actually let's, let's rewind what I do the night before I always preset my posts. That's something, um, I literally guys, I do it on Instagram. I will just lay in bed and then I go back, you know, preset the post and then click next, type it, click back and then click save as draft. I'll do that twice. And then I'm like golden, you know, and I'll wake up, I make the post and I go about my day eating breakfast, reading, and then maybe I'll go and like follow up with some people, you know, there's nothing set in stone about that. But power hours, like, I will preach that all the time. There's no reason why you should be on your phone 24-7. That's just not beneficial to me unless you're, like, almost like promotion time. Um, so I'll wake up. You know, I'll do my thing. I'll get my stuff done and make sure I'm good. And let's say if I have class, obviously I have class. In between class, I'll work. Um, at the gym, I put my do not disturb on. That's my time. You have to, like you said, you have to set your time. Um, now in the summer, obviously I don't have, I'm taking summer classes. Um, so, like, Ethan FaceTimes me from either 1230 or two. I do not make, I do not schedule things between that time. That's my time with him. Um, that's something that's very important to me. So you have to balance your time. So I set appointments now. That's something i never really did. I was like, Oh yeah, I'm open all day. I'm open all day. No, <laughs> I'm like, listen, I'm open from nine to 12 and from three to seven, you know, because when I, when I take 18 credit hours last semester at Purdue when I promoted. And so, you know, from, eight to 11 was my homework time. And so I made that clear to them, know your time and, um, know your worth of your time. And so, you know, like they need me too. Like I just don't need them. They need me. So power hours have helped me huge. Just set in like, I do <laughs> trying to get my mom on it too. I'll work the business for um, an hour, right? I'll go message people. I'll go follow up with them. I'll make a post. Um, and then when that's done, I'll go clean my room or clean my apartment or do laundry. Then I'll go back to the business and do power hour again. Um, there's no secret sauce to how you manage your time because what works for me might not work for you. You know, I have different classes, different times. Maybe I'll do a workout in earlier. It's really important to me. Um, but there's no excuse why you can't make a post. There's no excuse why you can't message someone. I voice memo. That's something that changed my business. You'll hear it so many times. Voice memo saves time too. So if I'm this is bad, but if I'm driving, you know, from the gym, I'll just voice memo, boom, 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 and I work. So I don't, I don't tell people, oh, I work eight hours a day every day. No, I don't want to do that because that's why I'm not getting a corporate job. You know, there's some days that I work probably eight hours, or probably days I work three. But guess what? I make a list every single night. I do my six list. What am I going to accomplish? When I cross those off, my day is complete. Like that's the thing, you know. So if it takes you three hours, if it takes you ten hours get your stuff done, be intentional. And that's, what's most important, um, when you are busy. Yeah. And I think honestly, like I think busy as people tend to be the most successful. Like I say that to my potentials all the time, but I mean, I say it to people that are in the business as well, you know, busy makes you more productive because you know, you only have certain amount of time to get things done. Here's the problem is when people use the excuse of being busy, they're just not making a priority. So my thing is, is like, I always say like, okay, well, instead of saying I was too busy, start saying it wasn't a priority. So like, oh, I, w I was too busy to answer your phone. Oh, well, your phone wasn't a priority to me because that's really what it is because you make time for things that you want to. Um, and so I think that it's important that all of us remember that like, you know, like she said, making sure you're intentional with, you know, not just scrolling through Facebook, that does not count as working. Um, mm -hmm. But going to intent, like going to people's profiles intentionally, you know, interacting with them, that type of stuff is, you know, hold on, let me make sure everybody's mute. I'm going to have to ask. To and like set, set goals for yourself, you know, like if you're going to preach to someone to go add 30 people a day on Instagram when you're a leader, then you better be doing it too. That's something Kelsey was like, you better be doing that. I'm like, you're you know, so make sure that you're doing that too. Every night I set new goals for myself. If it's get three customers, get three customers, inspire my team, inspire my team, put more trainings in, put more trainings in. It's going to change as you go. Just make sure that what you're doing is actually going to benefit your business. Yeah. So what do you do? Like kind of how have you transitioned into the role as like a leader? Um, cause obviously, you know, you've never done anything like leadership position wise, like as far as like a job. Um, so what have you kind of learned along the way? What have you failed at? What have you succeeded at? Um, like, you know, just be honest. Yeah. So, um, 
as a leader, I just feel like, I mean, you're always learning. You'll never know. I'm still learning. Um, a biggest thing is mindset. So, and this is something I know you've talked about, Tiffany's talked about, is I became a servant leadership. So, or a servant to them. So you, I was very selfish when I started this business. I'll be the first to admit it's all about me. I could give a crap less if someone hit their promotion. I was like, how am I going to get there? How am I going to hit this dream? Um, now it's, how is my mom going to get here? How is hope going to get here? How is, you know, whatever it may be, that's a huge thing. Um, for me personally, I've probably failed at being more understanding since I was so self-efficient with my stuff. When someone's not getting something, I'm like, why don't you just get this? <laughs> like, you know, if I, if I tell them, go watch your training and then they ask me questions that was answering the training, I'm like, why aren't you doing that? But I have to just take a step back and be like, you know what? Not everyone's me. Not everyone just goes with it. There's some people that do it. And so as a leader, you need to know who you're working with. If you don't know your team, you can't lead. Like you can't be a manager. You can't boss people around. That's not how it works. Um, and so taking a step back and actually getting to know my team, that's the biggest thing. I kind of narrowed it down and got strictly my team. That was a huge thing that really helped me. I talk their goals. I want to hear their dreams. I want to hear their struggles. Um, being more personal, personal with them. I'm actually reaching out to them and be like, hey, how is it going? you know, how are you doing? Like, how are you actually doing as a person? Cause they're, they're them themselves are like really important. You know what I mean? You want them to be happy with it. Um, so actually caring what they want and just being there for questions. It's hard when you start to grow to be there for every single question. And so that's why you want to train other people to be able to do that. Like I have many other leaders on my team that have always helped me, but the biggest thing is just um, really asking them, how can I help you? Like, what do you need for me? Is it this? Is it that? And I think, I think Lachelle, we've talked about this, you know, we go from being told what to do every single day. So when you start something like this, you're like, what do I do? And then we're like, well, it's your business. Have fun. You know? So if someone needs you to hold their hand, hold their hand, but realize though, like, but you yourself, you have to realize when it's helpful and then when it's just becoming expected. That's a big thing I learned because I would pour into these people, you know, I would try to just help them as much as I can and message them. They didn't want it for themselves. And so you have to realize when it gets to a certain point, if you know, you're just trying to do it for them and it's like, you need to know where to put your time in. So that's a big thing I've learned is that I will give you all the resources you need and I will help and I will help until it gets to a point where you need to want it for yourself. And then I'll kind of step back and you pour into people who are working. That's something I've tried to help my, my mom with. You can't, you know, beat a dead horse. And that's especially, you don't want to give up on someone by any means, but it's all in time. And so that's something I really had to work on too, is knowing when and where. And however, people have surprised me, you know, so never judge on who's going to be good or not at this business. Give everyone a fair chance and just be level headed with it and just be calm. Don't get frustrated. That was a big thing with me. I'm just like, why can't you get four customers? Like well, I, I got mine in a week, you know? Um, that's selfish. Like not everyone gets it. Not everyone understands it the same way. So you just have to understand and be like, Hey, what's working for you? What's not, Hey, this is what worked for me. This is this, you know, be more one-on-one -on -one and actually care. Um, that is huge, 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 huge. Yeah. I love that. I love everything you said. And I think like a big thing, like you said, is just meeting people where they're at and giving them some grace and understanding, you know, how you felt when you first started, like you said, you wanted to quit the next morning you woke up. So knowing that some people might not be as, as into it as we are now, because they're not where we are now. And so I think that a lot of times we can forget that you know, from being in the business, either, either it's just a couple months or either it's a couple years. Um, because we want everybody to be as excited as about the business as we are, but sometimes we have to create that excitement for them. Um, so I love, I love that. Um, okay. So what, how do you kind of, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Like as far as like working your business, posting, what does that look like? How many times do you post? I know, I know a lot of these, some of these, but I want to get a refresher too, because I know you rock out Instagram. Okay. So. So Here's the thing, not gonna lie, like I've been traveling, here's an excuse probably, but I've been traveling up the wazoo right now with like Tennessee, North Carolina. So it's not, it's been kind of insane. Now I have two kids around me that I'm not used to. So it's an, it's, it's an adjustment. Um, but usually, honestly, with presetting, so on Instagram, I like to post only twice a day on my main page, but then I post on my story. So I'm trying to think. <laughs> Really, it's, I, think, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but really like I'll wake up and I make my post and I go about my day and when people are messaging me, I message them back, you know, or people are liking my stuff because what, so this, I don't know if it's on topic or not, but what I do is I like run campaigns with my products. I love that. It's so, works so good for me. So on that a little bit. Okay. So 
And okay, so you know, like we do all these challenges, right? You're like, oh, five hair models, I got challenges, right? Cool. And then the next day you post about skincare. And the next day you post about the greens. The next day you post about the wraps. Well, what happened to the five? Like what happened? You know, like where's the, where'd it go? So my biggest like success that I've been having is people love challenges. Okay. And it's a really good, easy way to kind of slip in a 90 day program. And they're like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. Um, they don't like freak out about the price. Um, but I'm just saying, so like, I'll talk about a product at least like every day for at least like three or four days. I'll post about it on my story. I'll post about it on my feed. Um, so like now I'm doing the cleanse. Okay. So I'll post about literally I have the cleanse then I'll like a lifestyle and then I have the cleanse and I'll have a lifestyle. So I'll always alternate product and lifestyle. It's always what I do. Um, you know, make sure they're seeing you. And I always incorporate the business in every single post I do or like try to look, well, I had Krispy Kreme today. That wasn't only a product post, but I'm just saying. So, but that's a huge thing. That's really, really worked for me. And so let's say I'm doing the greens, right guys, you should be taking the products anyways. Why are you documenting it? Like I literally, I'll play music or my audio book and I'll go on my Instagram story Instagram stories are the best. Let's just say that. Use it. Everyone sees it. So you literally just swipe over to your, there's me, to your Instagram story and just like literally record you scooping it in there, mixing it up. And then I record myself taking the shot of it. I have literally probably got, I, I don't know how many people I got. So many people message me. What is that on your story? What is that on your story? Oh, what, what do you know? You know, or something like that. Guys, I'm telling you run that. And then when you do like five and like in two days say, okay, now I'm down to two. Now I'm down to whatever. Don't go from like five to two. Even if you have like 10 people join, Oh, I still only have three spots left. I still only have two, you know, make, create a sense of urgency, um, pick a product and run with it. Obviously we have a lot, but like my best sellers are cleanse greens, probiotics, hair, skin and nails and uh vital core because i plus like i've lost 43 pounds since last year and it's by using our products and lifestyle so that's a big thing too guys if you're building your own testimonies post about it talk about it um hair skin and nails my hair has grown so much talk about it and so i'll incorporate those in the challenges hair skin and nail challenge mermaid challenge and i'll just run with it um stay consistent because it takes an average person like six to seven times of seeing something actually buy it so that's a big thing when i'm posting about it um Obviously, I'll follow up. So I don't do the whole like follow up Friday thing. Honestly, if I'm if I want to be like, okay, I want to message people, then I'll go message people. Um, and I like create my little list. I have a binder, and so I'll basically keep track of when I followed up with them. Um, I get dates, and then I follow up with them there. And then let's see. As far, and then oh, I always like at least once a month. I always text all my all my loyal customers. I need to. You know, I was supposed to do that today, but I didn't. So I'm probably gonna do it like tomorrow when I get home. Um, I text all my customers and be like, how's everything going? Do we need to change anything? Customer retention is something I never used to do. And I lost half my volume doing that. So ever since I've been, um, keeping my customers in the loop, I've been able to maintain my volume, no problem. And just always grow. Very important. So really a day really varies. I'll go to the gym, come back. I always do the gym, <laughs> go to the gym, come back. Like tonight, you know, I'm working, I put my phone down and we cleaned out Addie's room, you know, and then I'll come back and I'm doing this right now. And then when I get off here, I have another thing and then I'm going to go finish my homework. Okay. So it's really, really, there's no set schedule. It's just, you have to do it. That is, that's the thing. There's no secret thing. Um, every day changes because our lives are not the same. Yeah, for sure. No, I love that. Okay. So talk about how you add people um, on Instagram. Okay. So know your market. Okay. Obviously I'm not a mom. I don't limit myself to like non moms, but I relate more to someone my age. I'm 21. I'm, you know, into fitness. That's something I'm really, really passionate about. So I'm not going to go add someone and it's, it sounds so judgmental, but I mean, it kind of, kind of is, I'm sorry, but it, it is. I mean, you're kind of like judging them what I get along with them. That's not someone I want to build a relationship with. So if I see someone that I know that health and wellness is really not their main care, just kind of judge off their page, I'm not going to add them or someone I don't really see myself Hey, so I don't really see myself, you know, actually talking with, I'm not going to add them. So what I do, you guys can do this too if you want. So clearly I wasn't a story. So honestly, I had assigned a lot of girls from like Boulder. I literally typed in like Pi Beta Phi because I was a Pi Phi at Purdue. I literally typed in Pi Beta Phi Boulder or anything. If you literally type in any sorority or any like boutique, literally here's Pi Phi. Here's all different states, Arizona, ASU, UK. And I went and I go and add a couple of girls and then when they add their suggested friends, I'll add a couple of theirs and I'll go and add their suggested friends. Um, and so really I look, if they have a good following, I'll look at that. 
if they have like an obnoxious amount, like if they're like the IG famous, I really don't add them. <laughs> That's just not what I do. Um, maybe I'll add from their list though, long as they're not dudes. But if they're like regular ones, I'll add there. So I try to, I try to add at least like 10 people a day. And the reason why mine's lower than like a mass ad is because when I go and add them, um, I like like three or four of their photos. Okay. And then like the next day and what I've been doing too, I've been kind of slacking on it. So let's say this is something that's a new feature on Instagram. Okay. Let's say this girl, right? I'm going to, I like her. I think she'd be great at this business. I'm going to like her thing and I'm going to click this little, I can't see it. Damn it. Right here. Yeah. Saves her photo. <laughs> Creepy. But if I want to go like, remember them, I literally just click this on my main page and there's all the photos that I've saved to people that I like. So, and then I can go and click it and then make sure I like their stuff. You know what I mean? That's just something that I like to do sometimes. Um, nice little additive thing, but so I only do 10 people try to do a day so I can actually make it personal with them. I don't mass ad. I don't really like that. Um, so, and then like weekly I'll go on my followers app and I'll see who isn't following me back yet or maybe who, um, who, Oh, say, d yeah, just unfollowed me and then I'll make sure my ratio is even. That's something I do weekly. I used to get offended for that. It's kind of, it's kind of funny now when I watch people unfollow me, I'm like, see ya, but, um, like for old friends, but anyways, and so if they don't follow me back within like the next week and a half and I've been really interacting on their page, then I just unfollow them because it's not, that's, that's just not what I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so like, and be real, be, be like real. Okay. Because let's say Somebody if you asked what app you used, oh, literally follower. Too literally just followers I'll show you it's like followers like three little emojis hi Liam hey why isn't it going away no. uh right there okay yeah followers okay and so be real like if you don't like their shirt don't comment on there like your shirt you know like find things you like like I love French Bulldogs so I'll go to a French Bulldog page you know and maybe be like oh my god I love your puppy and when you go onto those pages you're Ashley that loves French Bulldogs. You're not Ashley with It Works. Okay, build a relationship with them and be like, oh my God, I love this. Like I, this girl has great makeup. I follow her. I was like, where'd you get that lip color? I love this. And then she followed me back, you know? And we just started talking about it. Or I talked to a girl about editing her photos on Instagram for a hot second, you know? And that's the thing. Like if you guys build a relationship, like let's say Facebook, right? You go on these groups, they're going to probably add you then let them see your stuff. That's where posting consistently comes into play because as long as you're doing your part, they're going to go on your page and be like, Oh, Hey, what's this? You know what I mean? So if you're like making them like making you known in these pages and being social, um, that gets your name out there, obviously. Um, also I love the explore page. I've been, so I'm public on Instagram. That's how you get on the explore page. If you're private, you won't get on the explore page. Um, that's where a lot of my customers and potential distributors have actually come from is the explore page. So be social. So when you're liking someone's and someone likes theirs, that's how you end up on their explore page. If that makes sense. Um, and I'll add from there the same way I do. So like, this is the explore page. No one knows. It's like where you go to you. If you press the search button, yeah, click the search. And so this is, so basically Instagram picks out things that they think you would like and they'll put them in there. And then like this girl, she's cute. I'll add her. Okay. She's added. See? So that, you know what I mean? Things like that. And then I'll go from, I'll go on her suggested friends. And I'm like, oh, she's, oh, I know her actually. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to follow her. <laughs> but you know, like just things like that. And then you just go and you'll add them. It's that simple. Don't overcomplicate it, but don't, don't be adding people that you could never see yourself talking to in, in a million years. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think too, like, think about like, I always say like you want, I think Lachelle maybe said this, but like, you always want to recruit up. Like you always want to like find somebody that you would be nervous to reach out to because like anybody can message people of horrible Instagram profiles. Like anybody can get the guts to do that, but like get the guts to message somebody that you really want on your team. And, and no, and like what I say is I'm like, I'm very intentional with who I reach out to because that's true. Like I don't just message anybody and everybody because I, this is not a charity case, you guys. Like, the, I am, like, picky about who I want on my team. And so the people that get messages from me are people that I really want on my team. So it's not like I'm just messaging anybody and everybody. So I try to make them feel, like, special because you want to be like, hey, you know, I just don't message anybody, but, like, I had to reach out to you because, like, your page is literally bomb or whatever you want to say. Um, and I love that she, like, was talking about the sororities and stuff because for me, what I used to do is I used to just search, like, hashtags, like, 
two under two. Cause I had like two kids under two and like relate to like people like that, because that conversation is going to be so much easier when you guys talk. Um, and your relationship is going to be so much easier because you do have so much in common. Um, and even if you want to go out from sororities and you're not in a sorority or you're not even in college, that's fine. But know who the clientele that you're going to get is so you can be prepared to have that conversation. Like I'd be totally fine with talking with the sorority girl because I got hammered a lot in college and I could definitely talk about, you know, having fun and going out. Like I, that's fine. Like I'm, I'm cool with talking about that, but I have to meet them where they're at. Like you can't expect like, you know, that person to have the mindset of somebody who's 34. I'm going to say something real quick. When, when you are adding from a, like a network, like mine, like younger, um, when you're 18, not everyone has health goals. Not everyone wants to spend $30 a month on greens because they don't understand it yet. So don't get discouraged. Um, because the people who made fun of me are now my customers. So, cause they've gained 30, 40 pounds. And so that's the thing, you know, don't write them off. And so like, I, I actually, I only go for girls. <laughs> sounds horrible. I only like add people though, that are like probably junior on up just because I'm not always, but I'm just saying that's usually my more successful rates is just because when they are starting to realize, Oh wow, I graduated in a year. I just gained 40 pounds. Then they're like, okay, I need to change this. And so then as you're posting your before and afters or whatever, in my case, they're like, Hey, you did this. Like I need your help. How do I do this? And so I've just noticed more in my junior senior year, I've been getting way more results with that. Um, just because you know, when girls just enter college, I don't think they really care about how, you know, how much jelly serve with the fruit and vegetables are getting because they're like, how much can I drink? Let's go. I'm just saying, not always, but I'm just saying. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so don't get discouraged on that. But like I said, know your market on that. For sure. Um, is there any other like last minute tips that you want to give or words of encouragement to somebody who may be like just struggling? Um, maybe they just got started with the $10 kits or maybe they've just hit a lull. Like what kind of words of encouragement would you like to leave on? Yeah, literally keep going because if I would have quit, I almost quit like three times because I was like, why isn't this working? And like, I don't get enough percentage, all oh, blah, blah, blah. I was blaming everyone but myself. Look in the mirror, like literally look in the mirror and be vulnerable and be like, I'm just not doing this. I'm just simply not doing this. Like this business will work if you work living proof of that. Um, you know, and especially like, I don't know if there's people my age on here, but just because like you don't have a family yet, just because you don't maybe have struggles yet prepare for if you do like don't you want extra money for that don't you want extra freedom so when I become a mom like I can stay at home with my kids that's a big thing too and it's just like like chill out <laughs> like chill this is not a race okay you know how many bonuses I missed like literally do you know how many bonuses I missed um because I didn't go at the speed I want you know Kate and I know Katie's on here me and her both I mean just because I hit a rank fast guys, guess what? I didn't even maintain it. Okay. Diamond I did because, and it took me a year and I was, I've been maintaining it like a breeze. Okay. So it's not a race. I tell my girls every single day, success does not have a timeline. There's a reason why an average entrepreneur takes at least five years to actually make a profit in the business. That is average. Literally the government on taxes allows you five years to earn a profit or it becomes a hobby. There's a reason behind that. So stop rushing it. Why are you willing to throw in the towel after a couple months when you'll work 40 damn years for someone else to go get them on their jet. I'm just saying, and that's something you're going to hear so much. So set your goals, set your priorities, focus on short term. Yes, you want diamond, but let's look at Ruby. Okay. Let's don't ignore that. That's still a big accomplishment. Diamond is, should be your main goal. It's amazing. Okay. Do it. Everyone, every single person you can do it, set your short term goals accomplish them, then move on, but always have in the back of your head what you really want, but don't get discouraged. I have rebuilt charts many times before I lost my entire diamond one time and had to rebuild it. Okay. I'm, I missed my what? $30,000 with double diamond right now. And if you know what, if I miss my 15, I don't give a crap because I'm still going to build a residual income. And that's how all of you guys should be doing. Focus on residual income. Who cares about a bonus? They're nice, but it's a bonus. For and I've missed so many. Hold on a second. What the hell's that? Okay, did you unmute yourself? I'm gonna mute everybody because somebody wasn't. I, I think I think that's it. It's just you know, it takes time for yourself. Self development is huge, huge, huge. I didn't do it because I was reading books in school. Quite frankly, I really didn't want to go home and read. To be honest with you, um, 
that has changed my business. It has changed my leadership completely. Um, I just in audiobooks, more. you guys download the audiobook and listen while you drive. Like yes. literally, that's how that's what I used to do. I didn't even know it was self development when I first start, got started because I was so hungry to learn when I first got started that I was just listening to Jade Hooper every single day on my way to work, like listening to one of her videos, and. Yeah. And that was like my self-development. And I also start each morning with like an inspirational quote and looking through inspirational quotes was like my self-development as well. Just like something so small like that. It does not have to be sitting down and reading a book in a sunroom, you guys. Like this can be listening to a podcast. Like sometimes my kids are screaming in the background. Like it literally just has to be like, you can be cooking, you can be doing whatever and just making the time, multitasking, folding laundry, like making that time is so, so, so important to invest in yourself because if you're even thinking about like wanting to add people to your team, you can't pour into them from an empty cup if you're not filling yourself up. And also you have to work like this. The best, I have like two really good, um, like analogies that like really helped me visualize this. Um, the first one was when somebody said to me, you have to work like 99% of people won't. So you can live like 1% of people do. And that was like an amazing like quote to me because I was like, yes, that's so true. Like most people, like they don't want to make a, like have to make a post, but most people are making posts that aren't making them any income every single day anyways, but they just don't want to have to think about it, but they don't want to have to force themselves to get into the routine. And it's not easy. You guys, like it's, if you like, for me, I never taken one freaking selfie before I joined this business. I'm not even kidding you. I never took one selfie because I was like, those people who take selfies are so conceited and they love themselves way too much. Never taken one selfie. And only things I posted on, on social media was like of my kid that I had just had. So it wasn't even of my face. So people probably didn't even know what I looked like, which is probably why Erin didn't reach out to me and I reached out to her. But the thing is, is like you, can change. Like life is all about adjusting. Like it's never too late to reinvent yourself or to become the person that you've always wanted to be. Um, the other thing is that Carrie Bauer was talking about it and she was just talking about how, you know, everybody, like our society is so used to like going to work and getting paid and going to work and getting paid and going to work. It's like when you put a pig, a penny in like a horse, uh, the grocery store, it like starts working, you press the button and starts working, you put the penny in and it starts working. But as an entrepreneur, you have to shift your mindset, okay? And you have to literally know that you're putting in work right now that is going to pay you for months and years to come, but you have to put in the work consistently, okay? And you never will reap the full potential of that if you stop. And so for me, like I've always just like been one of those people who's, I'm working for the time like now when I'm basically working as much as probably a little bit, probably more, but like very close to what I was doing at diamond, but I'm just getting paid four times more. So it goes from work, get paid, work, get paid to work, 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 work. You get paid a little bit work, 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 work. You get paid a little bit. And then there comes a time when you work and you get paid and you get paid and you get paid and you get paid. And that's what we all need to be working towards. So if you shift your mindset and know, you know, my first paycheck was $34. Most people quit after those paychecks, but the people who stay are the ones who are making crazy money now. So know that you can do it and that you're worth it and that it is going to be worth it when you stick with it because you don't want to be the girl that always quits. No, I literally, my check, my check never went over, like, at least besides my thousand dollar bonus, never went over like 430. I'm not even kidding you. My, the check right before diamond was like 433. And the next one was obviously way more than that. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow, I am so happy. I manned up and did not quit. Like it, it's insane. And a year guys, a year, that's nothing, nothing. So quick. It goes so fast. So I know. I know. Um, well, anyways, thank you guys for hopping on. Thanks Ashley for hopping on and pouring into us. Um, and I'm glad that you guys hopped on. Hopefully you got something out of it. Um, and you guys super pumped for the announcement tonight. I have no idea what it is. We're going to announce something on the family call. Okay. Bye.